Virgo, welcome to April 2017. This is Gwendolyn. Welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time here, welcome. This video is going to be a telescope for April for Virgo. And uh, as I'm shuffling here, I just want to give a shout out to the mother daughter Virgo Leo duo. You know who you are, so hello. And um, I have some exciting announcements for April, and I will be sharing those at the end of the video. So if you want to stick around for those after the reading, uh, please do so. And uh, I'm just going to get straight into the reading for April for Virgo. So as I'm shuffling, I just want to say there's um, still some energies from the new moon in Aries that happened on March 27th or 28th, depending upon um, where you are in the world. And that new moon in Aries happened in your eighth house, Virgo. So that's a house of um, things that are hidden. It's a house of transformation. It's usually the house related to Scorpio. So it has to do with sex, death, and taxes. It's funny. Um, that's one of the themes here for April is taxes. And you've got that new moon in Aries. So that's new energy, new motivation, new passion. Aries is fiery. It's, it's Mars energy. It's the warrior. So it's going to give you some new inspiration, new drive. Um, usually new moons are when we begin something new. So this could be the beginning of a transformation that happens for you over the next six months. Um, Scorpio also represents resurrection. It's the image of the phoenix um, as well as the scorpion. So you, some of you may be beginning a theme of resurrection over the next six months, whatever that means for you. Renewal. Uh, it's, it's like death and rebirth. So that's very Scorpio themes. So new moon in Aries says you have a lot of energy, inspiration, fire towards beginning something new that has to do with the themes of Scorpio. Um, something that is, some of you may be even beginning a clandestine affair under the surface. That can be very Scorpio energy too. So however that translates for you, check out Scorpio and something new beginning in that theme with red fiery Aries energy over the next six months. You'll see the results of it in six months when we get the full moon in Aries. And also I'm, I'm using the uh, tarot map that I've been developing. Some of you will, will recognize this. And for some reason for Virgo, I got the sense for the earth chakra to put the sand dollar. So whatever that means for some of you, I'm just getting this for Virgo. So I'm just showing that to you as a basis of what's going on at the root. Um, that may mean some things to some of you. So let's take a look at what's coming up for Virgo for April. Central focus. Oh my gosh, right there in theme with renewal. Okay, so many people don't like this card, Ten of Swords, because as you can see, it depicts, you know, death. And it depicts the, um, the darkest... It being darkest before the dawn. This is a 10 card. You can see it's 10 of swords. So 10 means a completing of a cycle. So for you, Scor uh, I'm saying Scorpio, because your, your moon is in, that new moon is in Scorpio for you in that eighth house. Uh, it's actually in Aries, but being eighth house, it has Scorpio themes. But um, renewal is happening for you, Virgo. 10 of swords. This, this means the release of negative thoughts. There is something that has been oppressing you, a way of thinking. This is oppression of the mind. So a theme for April for you is going to be whatever has been on your mind has been draining you. Your self can no longer tolerate it as it has been going. This is a completion of a cycle. And I, like I said, always call this card, it's always darkest before the dawn. Um, you can see there's a strip of daylight that's coming here. And this card sometimes reflects bottoming out. We see this with drug addiction. We see this with um, any any time your mind is holding thoughts that drain your energy. That's what Ten of Swords is about because swords represent the air element. They represent uh, ideas, thoughts, belief, knowledge, wisdom. And some people call this card negative thinking. So when negative thinking or when any pattern of belief is draining you, it 
it's sort of like saying you can't continue along that path. This is completing. This is 10. This is the, the end of that pattern, end of that cycle. Whatever has been draining you is coming to a bottoming out. It's, it's like you've emptied that cup and then the new day is coming. So that's what 10 of swords is about. Let's see what else is coming up for you, Virgo. And this is a, this is a great, it's sort of like the end is the end of this, this day is ending <laughs> the day, the ending of the dark night. It's always darkest before the dawn is what this card's about. So themes of renewal, Virgo, my goodness. Um, see what else is coming up in the shadows in the shadow position is chariot. What's passing away is six of wands. What's approaching is two of coins. What is highlighted is Jack of Coins or Knight of Coins, Knight of Pents. For week one, what's featured for you is Moon in Reverse. For week two, we've got Three of Cups in Reverse. For week three, we have Four of Swords in Reverse. And then for the final week of April, uh, we have Tower in Reverse. So interesting things. Couple, couple of major arcana cards showing up here for you. Um, what's, what's in the shadow position? This is usually the position for something that is unseen, that is unknown, that is not in our consciousness. It's something that is below the surface, excuse me, below the surface or is in delay, resistance, fear, or doubt is holding it back. So chariot has to do with a number of things. It's a card of victory. It's a card of success. It's a card of decision making and relying upon your um, intuition to make decisions to go forward and cross that finish line. So it's a card of action. And I usually point out in this card that he's balanced between the left brain and the right brain. This, this is like the left brain analytical, logical, conscious side. And then this is the right brain, which is more creative, wild, passionate, free, irrational. So it's a good balance between those two. And that's how he drives his chariot forward and crosses the finish line. This is a card of having the mind be in control and relying upon the intuition to make decisions and go forward. Because this is in the shadow position, it's saying that there may be some delay of going forward. There may be some resistance. Um, there may be some challenge to that. There's, there's a theme that I'm seeing with Six of Wands in the passing away position and Chariot in shadow that whoever was the rescuer or the guy on the white horse, that's passing away. Whatever, or if you have been playing the role of a rescuer or the person coming in on the horses, you know, the white horse, the rescuer, both of these cards are cards of victory. Both of these cards are cards of um, I'm coming in to save the day. That is passing away. And there's something that's needing to, to end because it's draining you. So with Chariot, there may be some block to decision making. There may be like a feeling like you want to go forward, but it's just not here yet. It's still in the shadow position. It's still in delay. It's not being seen. Like, what is your way forward? Um, it's here. It's, it's showing up for you. The, the momentum of chariot is showing up. It's just in your subconscious. It's just like emerging. It's not quite at the surface yet. So that's what uh, this chariot is about. Decision making, relying on your intuition, having a balance between your left brain and right brain, motion, victory, crossing that finish line. But it's just being held back by a little bit of fear, uh, resistance, doubt, or it just may be in delay right now. It's just below the surface. For this card, six of wands, is in the passing away position. So like I said, this is this can be the rescuer card. This can be the person who comes in on the white horse. It's usually a card of acclaim, success, victory, triumph, um, or reputation. So for some of you, this may be that there's, there's past successes or past victories. You, it's, what it says to me is that you can't rest on your laurels. You see this victory laurel here. Like that may be old successes, old triumphs. Some of you may be leaving something that brought you great success. Like you, you achieved something that you wanted to achieve and now that's going to be passing away into the past. Um, or there may be some old success, victory, triumph that had been part of your reputation or your character, and you're going to be leaving that behind. You're gonna, that's going to be dissolving away, and, and these new things are going to be coming in. 
because I do see whatever, whatever was going on here, the person on the horse, the rescuer, the person who came in to save the day, that's, that's going to be past stuff. There's no, there's a way in which you can no longer hold this, this mode of thinking. That's like your old self. You can see this is the old self dying out. And this is all the thinking that goes along with that. And this is a card of the new days breaking open. Um, and the way of thinking goes with it. With this, this is what's approaching Virgo for April. And this card is a card of flexibility. This is a card of fun. Two of coins can go in two different ways. The high side of two of coins energy is being adaptable. It's being flexible. It's being open to fun. He is on one foot. He's juggling. He's got all these balls in the air. And he says, you know what? Not only do I have all these balls in the air and it's fun, but watch me. I can do it on one foot too. And I adapt. Like if, if, if this, the waves go up or down. I'm like a ship on the water and I just go up and down with the water. It's okay. It doesn't phase me. I laugh at it, you know? So that's the high side of two of coins. He has a lot of humor. So he can just sort of like laugh and laugh and bend in the breeze and juggle. And it's just, a, it's, it can be very lighthearted. On the low side of two, side, two of coins, it can mean feeling off balance. So he's standing on one foot, so it can feel like, whoa, I don't feel stable. Two of coins can sometimes make, feel like I'm stretched thin, or it can feel like pressure, like I have to keep all these balls in the air. I've got to, I've got to take from Peter to pay Paul. My money is stretched to the limit. Um, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm worried. So whenever, whenever that low side of two of coins comes up, I always like to invite people to adapt a sense of flexibility, of fun. You know, things come and go. Yeah, we all have our ups and downs. For some reason, I'm getting that Led Zeppelin song, Good Times, Bad Times. It's really, it's really the attitude towards that. Um, two of coins can either say I'm feeling pressure or I'm having fun. It's a, it, on the high side, it really is about flexibility, fun, really, realizing that there are good times, there are bad times. And another, another meaning for two of coins is joint finances, negotiations, contracts. So two people involved and two people's money that is intertwined together. So for some of you, that's gonna be a theme that's coming up as well. But remember to be flexible, adapt to changing circumstances. That's the high side of the two that can really help you. And then featured, highlighted, is Jack of Coins. So this can sometimes be a, a Virgo, just like you, Virgo. So this could be you, Jack of Coins. Um, this person is very practical. They're very grounded. They're very down to earth. They're very good with money matters. This is known as the salesman card. So he really considers the bottom line of things. He weighs the pros and the cons. So I see with this highlighted for you, especially with letting go of some old way of thinking, some kind of pattern of thought, your mind being, being surrounded by thoughts that's like draining you. I see what's highlighted for you is really like connecting with your grounded self this guy too is sitting on a horse that may mean something to you. And it's a, it's a stationary horse. It's standing still. Um, so he is, he, you know, it's, I'm almost seeing like, this is the pause before you go forward. This may be in delay, the action going forward, but this is pausing and reflecting and considering the practicality of the matter. Is it practical if I do this? If he weighs pros and cons. He considers the bottom line. Is this gonna bring a return on my investment? Is this, is this worth investing my money in? This, this can also have to do with values. So coins and pence have to do with tangible things, things in the physical world, things like gold or money, but it can also have to do with uh, more abstract abstract terms of value. So like, does this, does this fit with my integrity? Does this line up with who I believe I am or what my values are is part of the consideration of what Jack of Diamonds thinks, you know, and, and he's a real experimenter. So he'll say, he'll say, okay, I'm going to try this out and see if that fits. I'm going to consider this and see if that fits. Jacks are about experimenting energies. And they're very romantic and playful and clever, but they have a little bit of trickster energy. So Jack of Diamonds, I kind of think of him as like a car salesman. You know, he's, he's, he's a salesman person. He's thinking about the bottom line. He's thinking about the money. He's good at making deals and negotiations. Sometimes I see this as like a real estate agent. Um, 
making the sale in charge of the money or the earth, whatever that may mean to you. And this can be an earth sign person too. This could be like a young, a younger man that is Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. So that may be highlighted for some of you too. Some of you may be engaged or involved with, um, or a, a Jack of Diamonds kind of guy showing up. And that can be pretty fun. It's just that they're very, they can also be careful in terms of money, in terms of investments, in terms of values. They weigh the pros and the cons. And they're usually practical and um, bottom line kind of people. This is actually the, the birth card of the United States too. So that, that may mean something for some of you. Some things that are coming up for you, in other words, Virgo, for April, focus on money, values, what's what's important and adapting to cir uh, changing circumstances and considering what is the bottom line. What of these two coins, which one am I choosing? That's what, that's what Jack of coins says too. And, and by the way, he's suited up and he's ready for action. Action may still be waiting under the surface. This is going forward, but he's getting ready to go. Um, so first week of April is moon in reverse. I'm going to ask you what feelings are below the surface that feel unsafe to let up. That look full moon, full feelings, full a moon represents our emotions. So when the moon is full, we're full of emotion. That's actually where we get the word lunacy from or lunatic. Luna is also another word for moon. So it's like when all the emotions come to the surface and I usually, you know, because you have that Scorpio theme with that new moon in Aries in your eighth house, this is letting emotions come up from the subconscious and letting them be safe in the gentle night of the, um, you know, moonlight. It's not during the harsh light of day. It's, it's allowing emotions and feelings to come up, bubble up to the surface for evaluation. And again, just like chariot. We've got their wild side and the domestic side here. We've got the wolf who represents the right brain, creative, wild, passionate side. And then the, the left brain, which is the dog, which is more careful, cautious, loyal, left brain, um, you know, stable. So between stability and instability, allowing these feelings to come up for evaluation, what's true, what's constant versus what's changeable. And then that will take you forward to your new path that leads to the unknown. It leads you through this portal, through these doors. So if this, if moon means allowing yourself to dream, allowing yourself to feel the feels, allowing emotions to come up, allowing any, any emotional fullness up for evaluation to establish what's true, what's not true, what's real, what's not real. With this in reverse, I'm seeing that you don't feel like it's safe to let those subconscious emotions up yet in the first week of April. You may still be dealing with this. You may still be dealing with um, letting go of some old ways of thinking that have been draining you. And this may be what wants to come up, but is not ready to, it doesn't feel safe yet. Or there is, when a card is in reverse, there is some sort of fear, doubt, resistance. This is, this is something that's showing up for you. So moon energy has to do with testing what's real. Um, looking past illusion, allowing subconscious emotions to come up for evaluation to go forward. And evaluation has to do with, you know, considering left brain, right brain. Um, is this from my, my logical side or is this from my wild, passionate, irrational side? Both of these have value. Um, ask yourself, what is it about the moon that wants to come out? Am I, am I ready to allow those emotions to bubble up? And, and you may want to keep a dream journal when moon shows up, allowing those emotions to come to surface and to light is, can be a healthy release of those. So, um, or just an acknowledgement of those. You may be preparing for that in the first week of April. Second week of April, this Card three of cups is, is one of my favorite cups, especially in this deck. I love this card. This card usually means celebration. It means friends and family. Um, it means like-minded people. So sometimes I see this as artists and musicians. Usually they're celebrating, having fun, hanging out together, doing things that, that represent your community, your tribe, socializing, having fun, going to parties, 
just being, just kind of having fun with your friends or even could be like coworkers at work. When it's in the reverse position, I call this the peanut gallery. So it means that people may be gossiping behind your back or uh, you may see some criticism in the second week of April. You may come across, you know, little comments from what someone might call the haters or just people who don't really see eye to eye with you, people who aren't being supportive. Don't give this any time or attention. It is just the peanut gallery. It is just like, um, I don't know why I'm getting like Hollywood squares for some reason. It's like the audience or something. It's just like nonsense. It's, it's not, it doesn't really concern or affect you. If you tune into it, it can drag you down. You know, it can drain all of your emotional happiness out. So don't, don't pay attention to the haters or the peanut gallery or the hens clucking second week of April. It's not, there may be some jealousy. Some people might be jealous of you when this card shows up. Don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's sort of just like that's, that is noise in the background that you don't need to be concerned with. They're not your people. You know, those, it's, it's like that Dr. Seuss quote that those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. So these aren't your people. If they're, if they're saying, if they're saying things against you, Virgo, don't worry about it. Just let them, let them be over in the peanut gallery themselves. Um, third week of April, we've got four of swords. This is a card of rest and relaxation. And when it's in the reverse position, it says you need this rest, but you're resisting it. You don't believe. You guys, Virgo is usually all about work. You guys are usually very hard workers. Um, and some of you are workaholics in which you, you think, okay, four of swords, that I just can't do that. I, I can't allow that. That doesn't, I don't have room for that in my life. But this card is usually a card of rest and renewal. It's a card of relax. <coughs> Excuse me. A card of it's a little bit cool in here this morning. Um, it's a card of rest and relaxation and recharging your batteries. You know, this I often say, like, even God rested on the seventh day. <laughs> so give yourself time to hang up your thoughts on the wall and just recharge, you know, live to fight another day. It's regathering your strength. It's regathering your energy. Allow yourself to meditate, perhaps allow those thoughts to just pass by and, and gain strength from the silence. When it's in the reverse position, um, it's saying you're not allowing that. There's fear, doubt, or what, what will happen if I take a break? What will happen if I recharge my batteries? What, what will happen if I step out of the fighting arena for a day? It's fear, doubt, or resistance to this. So see if you can embrace Four of Swords in the third week of April. Virgo, give yourself a break. Give yourself a rest and relaxation, even if it's just like meditating five minutes a day or 15 or whatever you can do, taking the nap, taking the break, taking time to just muse, taking time to do all those rewords, which is recharge, rejuvenate, rest, relax, all of those things to restore your normal self. Fourth week of April, tower in reverse. Change is coming, Virgo. We know this because this is your central card. The new day is coming. But what I'm seeing with the fourth week of April is that you may be resisting this change. Tower is about old structures that get shaken up and they get crumbled to the ground by these lightning bolts. These lightning bolts are sudden uh, change that comes out of nowhere. It's like a lightning bolt that comes out of nowhere. Sudden drastic change. This can be a good thing. This could be like breaking out of a shell. You know, like the, the, for the image for April, um, a chick breaking out of an egg. So this can be a great thing, breaking open to a new world. But I kind of see some of you, Virgo, saying, whoa, no, I'm not ready for that. I resist that. I do not want that. I don't want my world to be busted open. But it's here. It's, it's coming. It's at the end of April. There, some of you may have a very drastic change. And if you fight the energy of tower, it can be very scary. It can be like a storm. Um, I would say embrace the storm, you know, go into it. It can be very renewing. Embrace the new world that life is breaking open for you. It can be exciting. It can be, what comes after this card is star, which is all about renewal, being washed clean. If you think about the storm and rain and how after the rains, everything feels clear and renewed and washed clean and there's a lot of hope in that 
I'm going to say some of you Virgos are not feeling a sense of hope. Some of you may be feeling despair or terror or like, um, you know, your, your, your way of thinking you're ruled by Mercury and Mercury has, even though you're an earth sign, Mercury has to do with quicksilver and air and thought. So don't let your mind take over and drain your life force, Virgo. Don't, don't give in to despair or hopelessness. There's a great renewal after this card, after tower. So I'm going to say don't fight the storm. Go into the storm. There might be some hidden gems there for you if you can see the great change that is coming and embrace it. So that's my, that's my reading for you for April, Virgo. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up or share it with another Virgo who you think might enjoy it. Um, and if you want to stick around for those announcements, those will be right after this. And as always, I just want to thank everyone so much for watching Yours and the Stars. Hello, stars. So these are my announcements for April. I have some fun ones to share. Um, one, some of you may already know, I'm developing this tarot mat. And if you'd like to have one of your own, I'm going to be having these available um, on my website soon. I'm going to do ones in each color for each different sign. So like Aries is going to be red. Taurus is going to be like an ox blood um, brownish red color. You'll get to see all the colors for each of the different signs on my website. And I may also be selling these with a crystal set, I'll, like a, a package deal. One will just be the tarot mat itself and the other one will be a tarot mat with the crystals, a, a beginner set. Um, and then I'm eventually going to do one where there's a crystal grid also. So stay tuned for that. You can check my website. Um, I'm also going to be doing a tarot challenge for April with a prominent tarot reader down in Los Angeles uh, named Madame Pamita. I'm really excited to be doing that with her. And we're going to be doing that on Instagram. So feel free to check that out or hopefully you can join us over on Instagram or if you'd like to follow me over there. We're going to be doing a tarot challenge for April. It's called Magic Unicorn Tarot Challenge. So um, I'll have links where you can follow me there. And then, if uh, as always, if you'd like to book a reading with me, feel free to go over to my website and you can book a reading, a personal reading. I have um, tarot readings. I have cards of destiny, relationship readings. They, they include numerology as well or cards of destiny. Um, and then also I have a tarot course, an online tarot course. So if you'd like to sign up for that, I have a link to that on my website as well. So that's all my um, announcements for April. I'm also going to be doing a video eventually on this tarot mat and the different spreads that you can do with it. So hope you can join us over on Instagram or just want to let you know all those things are available. Again, thank you so much for watching. Yours in the stars.